My name is Brian Fraser, and I'm the coordinator of a project called Jesus Jazz and Worship. This is Tom Reynolds, a good friend who is vice principal at Emmanuel College at the Toronto School of Theology, um, the United Church College there, uh, teaches uh, in the area of disability, uh, hospitality, inclusion, but he is also an amazing jazz pianist. Mm -hmm. And so he's been one of the natural people that we've turned to in this project to, uh, to help us reflect upon what are the dynamics. We've been trying to do a deep dive into the dynamics of what Jesus is doing through jazz in worship. It's been uh, in large part funded by the Vital Worship Grants from the, Christian Insta the Calvin Institute of Christian Worship that in turn is funded by the Lilly Endowment, Inc., and so we're most grateful to them. We've had some money for research associates from Canada Summer Jobs Grant with the Government of Canada, and a little bit of funding from our national church, the Presbyterian Church in Canada. So we've just finished a two-day series of conversations about uh, jazz and spirituality. Uh, they followed an exercise where we interviewed about 70 jazz musicians, ministers, people organizing mm -hmm. the jazz services, and people who attended the jazz services. And so we have a summary of that, of those interviews. They were designed to find out what those people were experiencing in their language. So that the, the scholars call it the social, what's their construction of reality? And so we have a rich, rich, and Tom's been through this stuff, um, and uh, we hope to continue the project in some way, shape, or form to dig even deeper into that uh, rich mix of how people put their lives together, understand their lives, their music, the relationship between jazz and spirit and spirituality, the language they use to talk about that, so that those of us that come out of perhaps a more... Uh, orthodox understanding of Christian uh, spirituality can really enter into a genuine dialogical engagement uh, with them. So what you will see in the rest of this video is clips from those conversations over the last couple of days. Tom has done uh, two or three little kind of short TED talk sort of things on, on themes, but has been doing a lot of listening uh, it's a, there weren't a lot of us here, but the conversations were remarkably rich. So, with that long introduction, um, I'm curious about the, the themes that emerged for you as most powerful and most provocative and, and uh, intriguing. Yeah, there were, there were several that struck me in our conversation, and I think the first is the very word conversation. Mm. The fact that this was a collaborative, dialogical, uh, engagement with one another really embodied something about the jazz itself. Yeah. Jazz as conversational. And through each conversation there is transformation that happens among the people that are mm -hmm. conversing together. And I, one of the root words uh, that resonates with conversation is conversion. So conversation ah. is a conversion yeah. to and with each other, to each other. And through that, we become something more than we were before. Well, and, and I I'm think thinking, that happened. Yeah. No, I, and so I'm thinking of uh, one of the people that you'll probably hear a little bit from on the tape is a woman by the name of Naomi. Um, we did not know Naomi before this morning when, when she came to the event. She found out about it on social media. Um, and she said at the end of the, of the afternoon, she said, these conversations really changed me. They changed the way I think about church. She's an nice. amateur jazz musician. Nice. And, and it was a wonderful embodiment of precisely what you're talking about. Yeah, and so that, that theme really resonates. Yeah. Uh, and I think another theme is this very notion of resonance. Yes. That when differences engage one another, the sounding of those differences creates a common sense of resonance together yeah. um, that plays off one another. And we talked about the definition of beauty as yes, a harmony of yes. contrasts from Whitehead or that comes from, from Alfred North, North Whitehead, Whitehead. Yeah, and the whole process thought and process theology, and, and which how, is big for you. Uh, yeah, and yeah. how that can actually make sense of what goes on in the jazz performance, yeah. as well as in a community of diversity, differences engaging one another productively, yeah. each having gifts 
Yep. Um, and and sometimes there's tension in those gifts. Well, and I remember the the first reflection you did. At least to see if I remember this correctly. Yeah. There were three aspects, three qualities of community. There was tension. Um, Dissonance. Dissonance, that, yeah. and then call and response. Can you say a little bit more about those three? Well, and all three of those are not sequential in any way, no. but almost interrelated that sometimes it's the tension that's productive of being together. Yeah. And that's embodied in the jazz performance as musicians play off one another as different voices, piano, yeah. drums, mm -hmm. bass, vocal, horn instrument. Yeah. Um, and it's those instruments and the different uh, creative responses that people have together yeah. that creates a tension, but also compels the music forward as each response to another. So call and response, yes. tension uh, and, release and release together yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a kind of oscillating momentum that's dynamic and forward moving rather than tension is something to be scared away from, like a Well, and I think you were saying the, the image, that was yeah. the, one of the images that really said how, because we're uncomfortable with tension, we want to cut it. Yeah, because it's... And that doesn't oh, allow any release. That's and right. It just destroys any possibility. Well, to get rid of tension is to exclude. Yeah. And yes. To get rid of, uh, rather than think about possibilities for response. And yeah. so that's what I like about the term dissonance. Yes. First thing you hear musically in dissonance is you want to, oh, oh, get rid of that. But actually dissonance can be an invitation to build community and hold up things and add more voices to create yeah. a greater harmony that upholds that without dissolving it. Yeah. One of the um, people you'll hear a little bit from in the, in the clips that follow this is Dan Reynolds, who's our music director here at, at Brentwood. And listening to Dan and to Tom, um, they're both pianists, jazz pianists. And so listening to them both in the conversations but also in the informal times and they'd come up and they'd start playing away at the piano and they'd both have their fingers going. And it was a, a, a Dan a texted his, his mom texted him last night and said, so how was it? And, and she said, uh, I just got one word back. He said, wonderful. So oh, it was great. great to connect you two. And, and Tom oh, he's brilliant. Uh, did a concert on Thursday night with a couple of our local musicians, uh, Paul Rushka on bass and Christian Brathen on drums. And so we'll make sure that somewhere within this uh, collection of uh, this glimpse into the conversations we've had, there's, um, a, a link to that concert because Ken Burke and Burkeville Productions, uh, Marvin and, and Leah, wonderful AV people, uh, did the concert as well. So, yeah, one one theme that came out of that uh, with the notion of resonance and sometimes tension is the hunger for connection. Yes, yeah, I thought the, that the was a powerful, spiritual. powerful. Yeah, yeah, and and that certainly comes out in the interviews. Yeah, it did. That so the the. You caught the hunger, which I think is there. The other piece that struck me um, was what I called the hybridity. Yeah, same so, one. Yeah, so this is, um, we started calling this project the Jesus Jazz and Worship Project and mm -hmm. then realized early into the interviews that most of the jazz musicians, I mean, we knew this, but most of the jazz musicians we work with would not identify as Christian. And so they talked, about spirituality. So we decided for the consultation, we'd shift back to that more mm -hmm. generic language, partly to respect uh, where they are. And so we see it very much in terms of dialogical evangelization. They know they're coming to play in a Christian service of Christian worship. Um, we're very clear in, in the prayers, um, in the, the order of service that we use, uh, that this is a uh, Canadian Presbyterians, I would say, their theological stance is reconciling orthodoxy. So it's that mm -hmm. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not holding the sins against them, so not using that in an exclusionary right. way, right. but making us ambassadors of that message of reconciliation. And so we don't make any apologies for that in the service or in the stuff around the bulletin or in the message, but um, we want to make sure that we're respect, there's, there's respectful dialogue yeah. with wherever they may be in, in, their, in their searching. Well, one so thing I love that, the fact that you brought the searching. Sorry. Well, no, one thing that came up is this 
spiritual, as it, they name it, mm -hmm. in these interviews, um, recognition of something spiritual in the music going yeah, on. Yeah, there was nobody in the interviews that, that denied that reality in their composing mm -hmm. and their playing. So it's the recognition that maybe something of God is happening in that creative expression is a beautiful thing to witness. Well, and you were way. talking, in, in, uh, if you can remember it, in your, your closing prayer, and we'll make sure that's included in the, in the clips, um, but this sense of the pervasive energy of God. Right. In the, and it, I mean, that's central to process theology as well. But it's, well, it's central to the doctrine of creation, yeah, exactly. uh, that God is an ongoingly creative God and a redeeming God. Yes that engages the world and with the world and every event is an event that radiates with possibility. And so the human creative act taps into that energy that's already going on. Yeah. And it's a way to recognize the image of God. Yep. It's a way to recognize something sacred in the creative artistic event. You used a phrase this afternoon that it was one of those, I often talk about having BFOs, which are blinding flashes of the obvious. Okay, I love it. <laughs> so I so the phrase that. this afternoon was when you said, witness as witness. Yeah. Right, and it's, I mean, that's, that's such, that's so foundational to, to who we are as Christians. And so well, that said, yeah. you know, fear not, I am with you. Right. And, and that's essentially what we're saying, look, this is, this is the nature of reality. Well, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. Um, yeah. And so if, if that's lived out in ministry, uh, it's a ministry of accompaniment yes. and a joining with yes. that a lot of and, yeah. work on mission now is starting to realize. It's not doing two or four, but being with and yeah. in that process, something of a leavening of the world happens. Yeah, yeah the leavening yeah. imagery you, you used a couple of times and that, that's powerful too. And, and that whole sense that, and I think it's, you know, we, we had a hunch about the hunger and a hunch about how we could um, accompany people in that hunger here at Brentwood, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's growing, but it's, it's that sense of we have this wonderfully warm, acoustically um, resonant space. Decent instruments. Decent instruments. Yeah, yeah. Some pretty good jazz yeah, jazz Amazing. musicians hanging around here. But how do you make that available to people who uh, have a passion and a discipline for a particular way of being in the world that, as we've talked about, is, is with the Spirit? Well, Adele said it beautifully when she used the word sanctuary yeah. today. Yeah. This, it's very obvious in the conversations that happen that the jazz musicians find this a home. Yeah. where they can be yeah. supported, appreciated, and the creative energy can happen. Yeah. Where it's safe place to be creative, yeah. uh, it's, it's church as sanctuary in yeah. a real way. And it became clear to me as an outsider uh, witnessing that. Mm. So something good is happening. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'm so delighted that you're part of what's happening. And well, you very much are part of it. Appreciate we the talk about We talk about participants here at Brentwood. And, and you... You are now a full participant oh, well, in, I'm in the work and witness uh, of Brentwood. So thank you so much for being here. We look forward to the ongoing uh, conversations. Well, likewise. And can I ask a question? Where do yeah. you see this going as a next step? Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea. Um, one of the things we were talking about was, was that sense of, of openness and anticipation and, mm. and hope. Um, and so it's... Uh, if I had to put words to it, it would be, I see it deepening and broadening. Mm. So it's a deepening of our understanding of what God is doing through that community uh, with whom we've decided to be in companionship um, mm. and with, for whom we've decided to create space mm -hmm. or make, a, make space available. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the space here was gift to all of us. Um, and, and it's wonderful musical space. I mean, yeah. We haven't had a musician come in here who hasn't said, whoa, is this ever a nice In a the nice interviews, place to play. everybody compliments the yeah. acoustic environment, the warm welcome they yeah. receive. Yeah. So, so it, and, and for me, it's, I see it deepening my understanding of how God's working in the world. Yeah. 
So uh, one of the things that we've started to explore, and we were talking a little bit about it in the conversations the last couple of days, is looking again at that old Reformation doctrine of the invisible church. So this sense that, that God's work is not confined to the visible church. Um, and, and how do we stay in dialogue with, respectful connection with, companionship with, um, the places in the world where God's desire is being lived out in justice and in kindness and in humility. Mm. And as, as you, you talked about so eloquently, Jazz is a, is a music of justice and of kindness and of humility. Mm. You know, there's that, that humility, that vulnerability, that, that openness to being um, confronted and challenged and invited to grow mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's essential to, the, to that community. Vijay Iyer, who's a wonderful New York-based pianist, but is involved in developing the jazz program at Harvard. Mm. Um, in an article in Downbeat uh, a few months ago, said with he and his students and his faculty, they've tried to, to define jazz as a mode of music, and they found it increasingly difficult to do that. Like, mm -hmm. how do you, what's the quality of jazz? I don't know you can come up with. Mm -hmm. but, and so what they finally said was, oh, it's not a mode of music, it's a community. Mm -hmm. It's a community that plays jazz. Mm -hmm. And every time they play it, it's going to be different. It's a way of and it's going to defy, yeah. defy that kind of categorization. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. I think, that's, I think that's great. Well, in a certain way, that's what you are here at Brentwood. A jazz community, in a way, open yeah. to surprises, open to transformation, yeah. and being together in a unique way. Yeah, it's been beautiful to witness. Well, thank you so much for being with you and I, or being with us and being with you. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, I look forward to the ongoing conversations and I hope you folks enjoy uh, the conversations that you'll hear in mm -hmm. the rest of this, uh, this segment. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.